What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the, oh my God, I, I was about to call it something wrong and I was looking elsewhere. C2C Best Balls Show, man. Week Zero is here and I'm already flubbing. The C2C Best Ball Show where we talk underdog fantasy. We're a little bit of a transitional stage of our lives. You could call us a, a college football program that has uh, fell in some hard times and is shifting gears with new coaching staff, potentially. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit of the transfer portal draft here, the tailgate as well, and then kick it over to the pickums that they offer and discuss some of our favorite options slash ones to watch out for, uh, for week zero, these upcoming games. Ethan, are you, are you pretty upset with me for messing that up? Uh, I'm not going to lie. It was not smooth. Uh, should, an an otherwise say, smooth operator. Yeah. Shockingly shocking. <laughs> Should have just stopped and pumped it, redid it again, but oh well. So, uh, what's your big, what's your big underdog best ball draft thought right now? What's like the big thing that you think is relevant to our listeners? Um, well, I'm gonna actually share what I think is my big takeaway and how it's kind of shaped my thoughts for the future. I really wish that I went more off the board earlier, um, particularly in the best ball mania draft. Um, the more that we've kind of dug into this and like things have unfolded and, you know, I, I know injuries are obviously one that we're, we knew were going to happen regardless, but knowing just how fragile these 20 round drafts are, I really wish that I had gotten a little bit more off the board and was a little bit weirder, especially in rounds 15 through 20, because there are going to be guys that go off that are so low owned and guys who went in those ranges who are just going to absolutely bomb out. So um, I wish I would have gotten a little bit off the board uh, earlier. Um, I do think that it's really cool to see the success that underdog has had with these. So as of right now on Wednesday, just early afternoon, we're looking 66% full on the tailgate. Um, and the transfer portal is 35% filled. Um, probably doubtful that either of them fills completely. Uh, but the fact that we got three big, uh, multi-entry tournaments, uh, from underdog for college football this year is just such a complete awesome thing and a, a definite win for the industry. But, uh, what about you? What are your, your general thoughts? And if there's anything that you feel like is going to impact the way you build next year, if the structure is the same? Well, I would, to touch on your point about the getting weirder, it is a bummer to look at my percentages and see that like all my most, if not all my Silas Bolden, my Chris Hilton, my CJ Daniels is in uh, the tailgate, the smaller yeah. entry. Um, so I do agree. That's something to take away for next year. I think the biggest thing I'm going to be following is quarterback play and impact of it. Um, yeah. And then the other on top of that would be, you know, cats, my buddy, Andrew cats, our buddy, Andrew cats on uh, burning the red shirt. We discussed once, like what's going to be the difference between first and second in a league. Yeah. Is it going to be like a full year's worth of standings? The difference is going to be like 200 points or is it going to be like 900 points? Like what's the difference between those two going to be? So those are the two things I think we have to keep in mind uh, going into the next season, which I'm near positive. We'll have, um, similar, if not bigger contests might even scope into G five teams yeah. and maybe a little bit more flexibility. And is it going to be G five only P four only combo, et cetera. So I think we have to just do our best, have some fun with it. Transfer portal is not going to come anywhere near close to filling. If you have funds and, uh, can afford it literally and metaphorically, like <laughs> you should enter it. I have zero entries, but I'm going to be spending some time these next few nights while my wife's out of town and my baby's sleeping, knock on wood, <laughs> drafting some teams because I can't imagine this thing getting full, more full than like 65%. That's we're, four, fair. we're like three days away. Does it lock at kick of week zero? It says 24th. Which actually makes legitimate sense because yep. anybody that drafts after week zero gets a free look at SMU, Florida State, Georgia Tech. Yeah. Like you can't really do that. Yeah, we've got closes at Saturday, eight fifty nine AM Central. So So I I'm gonna be entering drafts. I think it's gonna be super valuable. I didn't wanna do it, but then once the overlay, I mean they're gonna be it's gonna be paying rake easily. 
And what's the first place payout? 10,000. I mean, I guess I could use 10,000. I don't know. It feels so like a good consolation. Current entrance is 777 and they pay out 368 get their money back. It is one of those things where it's just like the tailgate where, you know, you have to finish fairly high to get in there, but I think that's just the way best balls work, right? Like if only two out of 12 make it even to it's, playoffs, it's going to be always be a smaller. It's really of interesting too, because the overlay only helps you if you make it to that final round. Otherwise it is exactly the same contest. Interesting. Well, I'm going to be going into it. <laughs> the nice thing is too, right? Like people that are, that were playing it, that are, maybe the sharper or people that have been around a while or, you know, higher bankroll type people, they've already drafted. Yeah. They don't probably. have many left, you know, they're not saving it until 10 Friday entry night. max. Yeah. So, uh, I guess the quick one or two quick players to discuss Preston stone with this news of like potential dual threat situation of two options. Um, does that scare you from drafting any more stone if you were to draft? So, Stone is my highest on quarterback in the tailgate. Um, I went on a very strong tear of Preston Stone uh, towards the end um, because I really do like his bye weeks. And I think that he's going to have, a, I mean, we know that we can't pin down the SME receiving room uh, to a good degree, but we had this thought that we could pin down the quarterback who would be throwing all of those passes. Um now knowing that Kevin Jennings is in the mix um, a little bit more than we thought um, to the extent we still do not know completely. Um, but I think it'll be really interesting um, to, we'll, we'll know right away on, uh, you know, by the end of the night on Sunday, um, because I mentioned this uh, in the, um, the DFS show that we do campus caching. I mentioned it in the week zero episode there that, if we see Jennings get more than just, you know, a package um, in playing time, we, we know that there's a chance that it could cut in significantly to Preston Stone because that job would still be up for grabs, it seems. Um, that being said, no, I'm not super uh, worried about it because I do think Stone is pretty significantly the better quarterback at this time. Um, so unless there's injury, I don't see Jennings really getting, uh, you know, a, a solid shot at starting many games. Right. And then John Matier named quarterback, starting quarterback of Washington State. I think we talked about this in last week's episode, but to now that it's actually happened, let's see if it changes. I am under the like I told you guys that I would prefer to I would have rather have Matier than them. Guys like Fafita, Ewers, Beck. So I'm still in that like I would draft Matier in the fourth, fifth round range. Yeah. Um, pending where your spot is in the round, things like that. Um, are you, is that rich or is that about accurate for you? It's a little rich mainly because I haven't seen his ADP really rise much. Really? Um, yeah. I mean, I'm just going off of what I've seen other people show me in, in ADP and everything from the drafts that they're in. Um, I think Mox got him in like the, like 92nd overall, uh, yesterday, uh, which is crazy. But you think about the fact that these people who are drafting, especially if you're a DFS guy and you're not pouring over news and updating rankings every day, um, it's going to be slow to react. Uh, and you also have the mindset of people who are trying to get a value on him still, and they might press their luck a little bit and let him drop to his ADP or close to his ADP and only take him around early. So I don't think you need to go that rich, but I mean, I definitely get the value. It's it's a steal. <laughs> I think, you know, I you know me, I'm conservative, spread your usage around. If he lost to me in the eighth round, I would imagine I'd take him every single time. Yeah, that's fair. I think it, the upside is just so much. So I'll be, I might maybe let that first, uh, first draft kind of see what happens, see, yeah. you know, where he goes in that transfer portal, see if that changes anything with the entry. Maybe they're a little bit more invested. Sometimes that's not the you case. Think, right. Uh, but yeah, so let's kick it to what we're transitioning this sh little mini show over to, which is pick them. Want to discuss the different underdog pick them options, the picks you could call them, pick them picks. Uh, again, if you have not played on underdog and you want to check it out, C2C is the code, deposit, get some money as a deposit match. 
the the offerings are a little bit slimmer than I'd like, but I totally yeah. don't blame them. And the funny thing about this is like you could look today, you could look three hours later and stuff is changing. Yep. <laughs> um, what have you what have you put some money on and what are you looking at or waiting for? Yeah, so I uh, jumped early when they still had Preston Stone uh, entries up. Um, Preston Stone, his rushing uh, attempts, I believe, were at 12 or maybe 11 and a half. Um, and I was able to get uh, an entry with lower on that. Um, Jordan Hudson, um, I was able to get over three and a half receptions. I think that's a, a pretty nice uh, number. Um, that being said, both of those are no longer <laughs> no longer offered. Um, the uh, another one that I added on there was a Roydell Williams. Um, I believe his was a ten and a half or eleven combined rushes, um, and that too has disappeared. So um, the only one of mine that is still on there is I went higher on Haynes King's uh, completions at sixteen completions. Um, I think that they're going to be in a negative game script where they have to throw the ball a little bit more. I think that they may come out and try to test the outside a little bit on Florida state um, with some short screens, things like that. I, I think that he's going to be able to surpass this one. Um, it's also hoping that he's maybe taken a step forward in his decision-making and accuracy from last year um, because his number is pretty on par with what he did last year. Um, he had many games where he was throwing the ball 30, 35 times, but his completion percentage was not anything great because he is a little bit of a gunslinger. He's got that Austin Reed butthole clinch uh, in, in his blood. Uh, so I, I think that there is a, a, a little bit of hesitation uh, on my part with that 16, um, but I think that he's going to, to surpass it. What, what about you? Are there ones that are still up that you jumped in on, or how do you feel about that Haynes King line? Uh, well, the Haynes King line, you're not going to like what the projections that I have say 16.7 completions. So just barely. So you're telling over. me it's over though, right? It's I'm telling you it's over. <laughs> when you get that final 0.7 of a completion, you're going to be celebrating. Hell yeah. Uh, there are a couple that are still out there that I think are interesting that I would hit. Um, there's a couple that I bet that I included in a, a slip and it's gone. And it's not like it was egregious, but <laughs> Uh, the ones that call out to me are Jamal Haynes. If you can go under 17 rush attempts and you get the little hot tamale with it. I had it Ooh. at 17 and a half and hit the under and uh, that one feels good to me. I just don't know if the scorcher. That's 17 is just 18 is ch such a large number for him. That's fair. Yeah. You know, so I don't. If you are a little bit weary of something like that, I think the 75 and a half rushing yards under is almost comparable. Um, and then the other I was looking at, I hit 68 and a half rushing yards under for Jalen Knighton, which in my thought, here's here, tell me if I'm crazy. We talk that, about what this was that number again 68 and a half, and it's down to 66 okay. and a half. I would do that one to like 62 and a half, something yeah. like that. Um, if I was to make my projections and say Jalen Knighton is going to get like 38, 39% of carries, which is pretty steep for an SMU running by that's, that's like, that puts him around 60 to 65 yards. But now we go into the situation of a hot hand approach three, maybe a fourth guy sprinkled in there. And if I do projections a little bit more conservatively, like that number is around like 45 yards. So I like the under because I feel like best case scenario, like worst case scenario, it's like a coin flip, that 64, 65 yard type. Best case scenario, he gets six carries, ends with like 22 yards. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I am projecting him for more like 14 carries, 13, 14 carries, uh, which still, I mean, if he gets that, you're thinking a little over four and a half yards per carry, uh, and it's still right at that mark. So I don't hate it, but I mean, they're at such an advantage against Nevada that the problem is it's Nevada. Yeah. That's the, <laughs> that is the problem. Uh, so I, I feel good about it. I do not have any qualms about it. I can see why you're a little hesitant. I probably, I'm going to continue to put in 
picks that you don't like. So where uh, where are you at with RJ Maryland in this forty seven and a half? That feels like spot on and really uneasy of a number. Um, I would probably lean under, but I'm, I'm curious if you have a take there. Yeah, so that's a great call out. I was looking at this one a little bit. The numbers are pretty tight. I have them at 3.2 receptions. I have them at 43 and a half yards on, okay. I think it's five, 4.9 targets. So I don't know. It doesn't feel like, I feel like I would go under. I wouldn't include it at all. Yeah. Um, I also want to point out that they are really digging in on kickers this year. Um, I think I've seen kickers for SMU, Georgia Tech, and uh, Florida State. Yep. Um, so I I don't have anything this week, but I'm going to start doing a little bit of a dive on uh, college kickers and what kind of numbers we see uh, in in their in their future uh, because that seems like something that. Uh, underdog is probably going to lean upon because it's so, so variable. You like Douglas from Florida state from a yeah, DFS yeah. perspective, his yep. number is 37 and a half receiving yards. Are you inclined to go over on that? Uh, that's not uh, on underdog, right? Oh, maybe I need to hit refresh but, and it's gone. Maybe well, let, let me, let me, uh, let me heard you say it out loud. Let's see. Um, but what, what was the, Oh, it, yeah. See, that's what we're talking about. It populated like seven more of them. Okay. Um, Ja'Kai Douglas, so 37 and a half? 37 and a half. Do you, okay. do you like that? I mean, if you like him from DFS, you have to like 37 and a half receiving yeah. yards, right? See, the thing with Douglas is he's he's a big play guy. He he could get that on two, two receptions, I think, and be, be okay. Uh, you're hoping for a little bit more volume. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, like from a DFS perspective, I'm really relying on a big play from him, um, which does decrease my likelihood in playing something like this. But it's it's a really decent line. What's Malik Benson at? He's he's at 59 and a half. Yeah, I I, I would I would take that in comparison. If you got to play one of the two, I would easily play the the J- Jakai Douglas role. That number is intriguing for me. I like the under with the Malik Benson 59 and a half receiving yards. Yeah. I for receivers, tell me if you feel the same. I really like receptions more than I do yards. Oh, totally. That's like so much more projectable. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's and that's the big thing, right? Is the problem with these uh, yardage ones is that you know one play, it's over, right? Yeah. Um, that's the biggest uh, of bummers is when you he goes for eighty-two yards and sixty-eight of them were on one carry, and you ran for like fourteen or you whatever did. on yeah. The, you did mention and, that the uh, the field has been getting some criticism about uh, like playing surface conditions. Um, so leaning into that one play, you know, if, if a defender slips, you know, Ja'Kai Douglas has a, a 60 yarder and that <laughs> that pick is uh, is locked in. OK, any others that pop out to you? We got a limited slate. I'm really hoping that we get something for New Mexico, really hoping that we get something. I want some Hawaii props, not props, picks. I, uh, I slipped up their picks guys. Their picks. Their picks. We're doing pickums. If it's Hawaii, let's say they throw some Hawaii picks out there. What are you looking for? What are you, what are you going to target? Cause you know, everybody here knows timing is literally the name of the game when it comes to these things. Yeah. Uh, Because people put their entries in on underdog and then those lines move. So what are, what are you looking for with Hawaii? Uh, I would probably take Shager higher than I. My guess is they put it around three twenty four, something like that. Uh, something pretty aggressive. Um, I would take that pretty easily. Um, if we could get a Pofelli Ashlock, uh, anything higher than five and a half on receptions. Um, my guess is that they'd probably start out a little bit higher than that, but Alex Perry is another name that I'd really like to see. Um, I'd probably go higher than three and a half, four on him. Um, what about you? What, what specific guys are you uh, looking for and what kind of thresholds do you have? I would agree with that. It's funny, you know, what gets me going are unders. So you come out here and say, yeah, over, 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 which by the way, all three of those are certainly ones to target and think about. I'm thinking like, do they does underdog come out and just say Landon Sims 69 yards? I would 
hit an under on that immediately. Yeah. Right. Um, and then the New Mexico is the one I was really thinking about was the running backs. We talk about it yeah. on campus to cashing this week. We don't really know what we're going to get. If they go aggressive on numbers for those uh, two, three running backs, Eli Sanders, Andrew Henry, um, I, I would be hard pressed to not hammer an under on on those two over 60 yards. So yeah. those are the guys that I'm thinking about. Um, and then, of course, you just know the depth chart a little bit going into the, these getting closer to the game time because what's going to end up happening is you're going to get a Nick Trujillo, New Mexico receiving prop line of three and a half receptions, uh, pick line for three and a half receptions, and it's going to be up for 20 minutes. So yeah. that's the type of stuff that you need to find is these receiver three, four, five types that sneak by, get included, and then there's only a limited amount of time before yeah. they get pulled. Do you like any touchdown uh, picks this week? Or I know we generally try and avoid those, but I think Roydell Williams touchdown seems like a no-brainer. Yeah, they DJ a little bit with that point eight nine x. Um, I still like it though. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. I was looking at under with the tamale. Uh, so yeah, I think DJ U would be the one there. I would target the one point two two for the over yeah. the higher. Lawrence Toafili, 43 and a half rushing yards. That's, I feel like that's a little low. <laughs> you know, I thought you might say it was high. <laughs> <laughs> I did pause I, for a second, but no, I, I do think it's low. I would say over or higher if I had to. Yeah. That's too, I don't want to say good of a number. It's too fair of a number to, to consider. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh this slate will be interesting. It, Hopefully we get some more to pop off. Uh, I don't think any of these other ones are really, I don't think there's anything that's insanely out there. That's like super beatable. Give me, maybe we'll do this last year. We did kind of a me versus you quarterback fade, you know, position or whatever, right. A player and then fade or, or jam. Yeah. Give me two props that two props. Now this two is picks. a work in progress. Two picks on underdogs pickums. Give me two options um, and maybe we can keep track throughout the year. Cause now we can actually keep track winner and loser last year. We totally couldn't fair. thus I swept the board every single week, but this year we actually have data behind these. So <laughs> give me your two go. We'll do a snake draft or one by one. Give me one. Uh, let's go. Let's go Jalen Knight. And I, I know you like the under I'm, I'm taking the over or the, you take the over. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go – I'll go Jamal Haynes um, under 17 rush attempts. Okay. And then – I mean, I already I already put money behind it, so I'll take Haynes King higher than 16 uh, completions as well. Higher than 16 completions. Okay. This one's tough. What do I – what do I want to cap this off with? You, I don't want to do night and double up. That feels a little unfair. I'll go, I'll go Malik Benson under 59 and a half yards. Malik Benson under 59 and a half. What was your first one again? Uh, Haynes or uh, Jamal Haynes for uh, under the rushing yards. Under 35 and a half. Yeah. You're putting a, are we putting a dollar on that or what? I, I mean, I, I see. Why not? I don't, I don't know what uh, the official position is. I don't think I can do it on the live stream, but uh, we will kind of lock it in and, and take a look at it next week. Yep. Awesome. Well, let us know uh, in the comments, like, subscribe on YouTube. Uh, as Felix, uh, Felix would say, hit us up in the Discord. Let us know what you think of our underdog pick em picks. And which ones do you guys like for this week's slate? Uh, otherwise, we will catch you guys next week and enjoy the games.